Okay, so the most important part of this whole application, the DI layer. Let's start. Let's start this thing with a creation of an object. Let's name it as a module. Let's come over here and name it as app module. Let's create a file. And what I want to use is remove this thing. We want an val app module, which is basically going to store the dependencies which I'm going to require like have a module the thing is provided to me by Cohen now you can see now let's have this implementation but before we start I want you guys to know that why we have this dependency injection layer let me first make you understand that why we have a DI layer basically we are going to provide the implementation of the third party dependency in this DI layer like all the third party dependency which we shall have in our application shall be defined over here. For an instance, just imagine you are trying to make a API call, but before you make an API call, what do you need actually? That is a network call. The network call would be provided to me by retrofit. Now retrofit is actually a third party dependency. So I am going to define it over here. Now let's imagine that you want to have a Firebase auth. So what is a Firebase authentication? It is a third party dependency. So I'm going to create a dependency over here like that. So what we are going to do basically is we are going to create a dependency for our API service in this case and then for our repository and then for our view models. Like both of them like repository and our view models requires our API and my view model require repository for its working. So let's provide the dependency. But before that, what we need is we need to provide a retrofit builder. So let's have a something called single. Now this what this single is and why we are implementing. So I have something to tell you. So the single is actually a method which is provided to me by this coin. Okay. This coin DSL. DSL stands for Domain Specific Language. Since this coin is written in Kotlin, that's why it is kind of DSL as I've told you in the previous videos. So, yeah. the single is actually a method which is provided to me by coin. I have explained that in the starting of the course, like this coin, why we have this coin and all that stuff. So, this thing is like create a singleton instance of that particular class, like that particular dependency. If we want to have a singleton instance, then we use a single. Then, if we want to create a instance of anything, like then we can use a factory. Then there is something called a view model. That view model is a kind of factory which is used to create an instance every time it is required, but it is specifically for the view models. The single creates an instance of the particular thing for the very first time when the app is launched and that remains constant throughout the application's life cycle like it is not going to change anytime soon our application's life cycle starts like as soon as my application starts i'm going to make a network call and that network call is going to remain as it is throughout the whole process of my app like this thing is pretty obvious that i don't want to make several API calls inside an application cause that is just not feasible like I don't want to have more than one repository or oh, sorry my more than one uh, retrofit calls inside my application that's just not feasible but I can have something like whenever my repository is required so I can provide the dependency for that I will use a factory but and for the view models I will use a view model which is also kind of method which is provided to me by Cohen which creates the dependency whenever it is required. So let's have a single and create a retrofit builder. We will have a retrofit dot okay that's just a type order. Let's import the retrofit retrofit dot builder and what we are going to have is basically let's try first of all what we are going to have we are going to have our base URL let's say I have a base URL something called this 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 etc this is from where I'm going to have my API call and then I have something called to add my converter factory now I will have JSON converter factory as my converter factory you guys can have something called uh, Moshi converter cause that is like 
domain specific language that is in DSL and it also support KSP. It has a KSP support. Maybe we'll talk about the KSP and CAPT on some other videos. So we have our converter factory. Then let's try to build this thing. Simply let's build this thing and then what you want, you want to create. We want to create our user class API class dot Java. Now this is basically a singleton instance of our retrofit call. This is our retrofit call. We can see we have provided the base URL. Now what is this converter factory? Since the data which will come from our API would be in a JSON format. Like, it, like if you have any idea about what JSON is. So you know that the response which is coming from an API is always in the format of JSON. Okay. JavaScript object notation it stands for JSON. So we need to convert that into Kotlin. Okay. So this converter factory basically converts. A converter is which use JSON for JSON because JSON is so flexible types it supports this converts assume that handle all types if you are mixing JSON serialization with some sort of like we have all of this documentation we can read it like create an instance of JSON and converting encoding the JSON and decoding with like require so just imagine it like this is a converter factory is basically going to convert the JSON code to the Kotlin code inside of our application okay we can let's for refactor this and we can format it with Clint. Yeah, this, this thing looks now literally seriously good. So we have our single now. The next thing which I want is I want to have a factory. This factory will create the instance of my view repository whenever it is required. Let me say user repository. Yeah, the thing. My user repository requires something and I will get my coin method to implement it. Now, what does this thing basically means? You can see that I have an annotation over here. This annotation is thing like factory user repository get. Now, what does this get basically means to me? Means let's have an idea. Let's get to this user repository and this user repository is depending upon the API service for its working. Is that obvious? Right. So I'm asking this get keyword is basically like this get scope instance retrieves the object instance that initialize in the creation. Like we can see there is some sort of documentation over here at the get. But let me just clarify this thing for you. What is this actually? So this thing is nothing but whenever my repository is going to require the API. This get keyword, this get method, which is provided to me by Cohen, this get keyword is provided to me by Cohen. This will inject the dependency to the user's repository whenever it is required in the just recall the thing runtime or compile time. The Cohen works in the runtime, so whenever this thing will be required, it will be converted into the runtime. Like whenever the user repository requires the API service in the runtime, the coin is going to provide it. So that's why we have this thing. Now, what to have? What do, what do we have in this view model? Like I can see something like a view model. This view model is actually provided to me with the help of Cohen. You can see this is a class which is provided to me by Cohen. This is also kind of factory, but it is specific for the view models. Like it is going to create an instance. Like we see, my view model requires my repository for its working. Okay, so this get annotation, this get keyword is basically going to provide my view models, my repository whenever it is required in the runtime. So I have defined all my dependencies over here, and now what I want to do is to inform my Cohen that yeah I have these modules and I have all these things ready now I want you to take care that whenever inside my application I require any sort of dependency you have to handle it so this is like throwing all the blame on the Cohen okay so you remember this okay first of all you need to move this user UI state inside the utilities let's refactor this this was my bad now Inside this coin demo application, what I want you guys to do that this does that this should extend application. Now this is an application from where our coin will be initialized, and this is where like which is going to handle everything. So let's have some code. This would be like overwrite function 
on create so we are going to overwrite on create and what we are going to do is like start cohen let me have a yeah this one we are going to initialize the cohen and what we are going to initialize the first thing which i'm going to initialize is android logger yeah so this thing is basically going to log everything for me inside my log cut if i am so if i face some sort of error so this thing is basically going to log that thing for me then i have to provide android context and the context would be this let me provide the context so yeah that's pretty much i want then the next thing is i want to define a modules over here now which modules i have till now i have only one module whose name is app module so let me pass my app module over here now the co is initialized and my applications knows that yeah if anything requires coin is going to handle it now let's go inside the manifest and let's name as coin dependency application make sure that you add this thing if you not add this the coin would not be initialized and you might run into some sort of errors okay now we have our coin demo application set up in the next video what we are going to do is we are going to implement our ui screen and after that ui screen what we are going to show is like that should be our last video then we will implement our main activity and then for the very first time we are going to host our application so that's it for this video let's meet in the next one